guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my products that I regret buying or just products that really disappointed me. Now I don't feel like this video needs a super long disclaimer or an intro. I know almost everyone does but some people get offended when you talk about products that they like and you didn't. So some of these products are not complete fails for me. They're either disappointing, just too much money or just overhyped. I still use some of these products, don't get me wrong because I want to get my money's worth but in one way or another they were disappointing. So let's jump right in. First product that I want to talk about is actually the foundation that I was wearing in yesterday yesterday's video in my products that I recommend like high-end products that I recommend video and I kind of wanted to just get like a last feel for it I just I'm not crazy about this this is the La Mer treatment fluid foundation I have mine in the shade porcelain this was $85 I bought it at Nordstrom because Jaclyn Hill raved about it I do have dry skin like her but this is just super duper natural looking and don't get me wrong I love me a natural looking foundation that looks like skin but for the price tag I feel like Maybelline fit me or just so many other foundations can achieve that natural like skin like finish without being $85 I'm just not crazy about it I don't really go for this one like when I want to look flawless I don't think La Mer fluid foundation it's very 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 sheer light coverage doesn't really cover up any imperfections any dark spots this is perfect for really dry 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 skin and even still like I have dry patches but this just looked really weird on my nose and it just didn't look really good up close it looks great on camera but most foundations look great on camera but I'm telling you in person I just wasn't feeling it and for $85 I think it's just too expensive if you're into that sheer coverage or you have mature skin or you have no pores and like no discoloration this is a great everyday foundation for you but for $85 I'm just not crazy about it. it really sucks that this shade is like my perfect shade because I want to love it so bad I'm just not in love with it it does have an SPF of 15 which can be a little scary for pictures I didn't find any flashback but it does have an SPF and La Mer is so famous for their skincare and I don't doubt that they have amazing skincare but this foundation just didn't work for me let me know if you have it and if you love it tell me why you love it but I personally regret buying this it was a big disappointment for me sorry the next product is also a foundation this one is so old like I need to get rid of this ASAP this is the Chanel perfection Lumi air this also has an SPF of 15 and for some reason it says the active ingredient is titanium dioxide which is weird I don't know what that means I mainly got this because it's Chanel because of the logo because of the packaging and perfection I mean who doesn't want their face to look like perfection so I like luminous finishes I like perfecting like foundations but this was far from that it's like a cream it's very thick I don't know I just I'm not crazy about it the shade that I have is 40 beige which this one looks golden but then when you blend it out it has a like green gray undertones which a lot of beige foundations have they tend to make me look really old so this one I'm just not feeling it is also super old so it's probably expired but even when it wasn't expired like when I first got it I just I wasn't a fan I don't know I really want to give another Chanel foundation a chance but this one highly disappointed me and I really wanted to love it because it's Chanel and it was like $50 and that's pretty pricey really disappointing funny enough the next product is also by Chanel now this product I have like a love-hate relationship with this is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel where do I start so this is a cream bronzer it's super expensive everybody raves about it it looks like that problem that I have with this is that it's almost too natural I don't know if it's just on my skin tone per se but it just blends into almost nothing and I'm just like if I'm gonna add an extra step or an extra layer of product on my skin and it's not gonna show up things are gonna start looking muddy because I'm gonna have to add more product on top and I just don't like that I don't have a problem with the formula although some people say it looks really muddy and patchy on them but the color is just when you blend it it turns into almost nothing like I don't know it's just so expensive and I just don't really recommend it if you are tan or have deep skin I think Chanel seriously needs to reevaluate and start making products for deeper and darker skin and medium skin because I don't know I just find it kind of insulting that they only have one color in their cream bronzer and it looks like that like it's just barely noticeable and I'm not that tan I'm about like NC 30 so I just don't understand why it's so disappearing on me I've tried it with a brush it's also really tricky to find the right brush with this I recommend a beauty blender or a stippling brush but once you start blending it's just blending into nothing so for that this is disappointing I still use it because it's pretty because it is a cream it will look really natural so when I'm on my real natural days 
Sometimes I'll use this, but I still don't find myself reaching for this because I'm just not in love with it. I know a lot of people love this, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. So definitely disappointing. So the next product is definitely going to surprise you because I've talked about this a lot. But I still find it disappointing. This is the Tom Ford Bronzer in Bronze Age. So this is the bigger one, the large bronzing powder. This was like $100. Pretty damn near $100. I think it was like $80 or $90. You do get a really pretty packaging, but I actually find large compacts like this very cumbersome and just hard to store. I get that it looks so like elegant when you whip this out and you're like touching up with this, but... Honestly, for every day, I'm not going to throw this in my purse. It's just a little too big. It might just be the color because the consistency on this is awesome. But for $100, I'm just not wowed. I'm not floored. Again, it's just not anything like, oh my god, run out and buy it. I should have gotten the smaller one because it's just so big. And for $100, it's just a bronzer. I love the Marc Jacobs one, the Tantric. I featured that in yesterday's video. But this one is just a little disappointing. Again, the formula is beautiful so gorgeous but the color is just like eh. it's nothing crazy let me know if you have this Tom Ford bronzer in another color maybe I just need to get another color because this one is just not doing much for me like I still use it it's pretty I just can't justify the price does that make sense I hope it makes sense the next product I want to talk about is this Laura Mercier contour palette I bought this because of Amra I'm Razy and I don't know to me this is just super thick these colors are so pigmented that it kind of like scares me away I don't doubt that it's really creamy and beautiful but I just don't go for this because I'm like scared of it so I don't know maybe it's just because I'm not really into cream contouring it's just kind of like a realm that I don't dive into I would much rather have like a yellow matte shade to actually like highlight under my eyes than these highlights these highlights are just really strange one is really bronzy and one is super yellow but they're like sheer when you blend it out I don't know I'm just not crazy about it the only shade that I like is contour number one so for that this makes it super disappointing because for me to just like one shade for the price for the money is just very very disappointing and I regret buying this because I just feel like it's the colors that really throw me off so I'm sorry but I just don't like this one I feel like most of the disappointing products are all complexion products and that's because I am very picky about my complexion products if I'm gonna spend the money on something that's gonna go on my face like I need it to look flawless I need not to break me out. I need it to blend nicely and it just needs to be an overall great product that's worth the money. So complexion products could be a big hit or miss. Eyeshadows can be a little bit more forgiving. Maybe one or two shadows in a palette are duds but for the most part I feel like eyeshadows I could work with. Lip products I also really don't purchase a lot of. Like I tend to just stay in my comfort zone which is neutrals which I know I'm gonna love. But complexion products are so personal. A foundation that looks great on you might not look great on me so it really Really depends on your skin tone skin type like so many different variables so that's why complexion products are so tricky and it's so hard to go off of someone's recommendation because they're not gonna have the same face as you not the same taste as you not the same pore size as you so so many different variables and I think that's why I have the most complexion products So this next bronzer is by Giorgio Armani. This is their Sun Fabric Sheer Bronzer in 100. I don't know what I was thinking when I got this shade. It's just not the right shade for me. So this is what the shade looks like. It just looks really muddy and dirty on my skin. I just really don't like this. I don't think it's worth the money. I'll use it occasionally because it was so expensive, but it's not a bronzer that I'm like, run out and buy this. Eh, I just don't like this one and I regret purchasing this. So the next product is this Givenchy Loose Powder in Universal Nude. And it's supposed to be a universal shade that is supposed to mattify the skin. And it is really, really nice. I mean, the packaging is gorgeous. The product is nice. It's that really fine, fine, thin powder. I just don't find myself using this. And for that, it's disappointing to me because I'd rather set my face with MAC Studio Fix Powder with the Giorgio Armani Compact with Laura Mercier, with all these other types of powders, but just not this one. I don't know what it is. Don't get me wrong, this makes you look nice and flawless and matte, but maybe in the winter time I get more use out of this, but right now I just feel like it's sitting in my collection and I'm like, why am I not using this? But then when I'm sitting and doing my makeup, it's just not one that I go for, so hopefully in the winter time I can get a little more use out of this because I like that matte look in the winter time. Right now it's just not getting any love and for that it's very disappointing. So apparently I just find all loose powders and powder is disappointing like it takes a lot for me to like one let's just put it that way I have dry skin and a lot of powders just emphasize that and accentuate my dryness and my lines and my pores this one is actually a repurchase so it's kind of weird to be talking about it but this is the MAC prep and prime 
loose powder. This is their transparent finishing powder. This one is also very, very finely milled, very thin, just like the Makeup Forever and like the NARS kind of powder. This will give you a flashback if you are baking heavy with this. Like this is not the type of powder you want to bake with. And it's just too finely milled for me. Like I just don't like this kind of powder. I will say I like this for mattifying my lips if I don't want to use like my Laura Mercier. So today, for example, I have Jar Cosmetics Cocoa Bean Lip Gloss. And I just took a little bit of this and just patted it on. I also use a little bit of the Smashbox mattifier. But I really like loose powders for mattifying the lips. Unless I'm looking for a powder to mattify my lips, this does not get touched. So for that, that makes it very disappointing and a product that I regret repurchasing. When I didn't know much about makeup and like different powders, I used to use this all the time. So this is a repurchase, but then it just kind of sat in my collection because I discovered baking and all of that. So yeah, this gets no more love for me. So this next product is a concealer that costs $70. I think I lost my mind when I purchased this. And I totally regret buying this because it gets no use out of me. This is the Clay de Peau Concealer in Almond. It's a stick concealer. It looks like I don't have a lot, but I don't think it came with a lot to begin with. This says it's 0.17 ounces. So 0.17 ounces for that price. Okay, maybe it's just really pigmented, which, okay, I'll give it that. It's pigmented, but under the eyes, this is just a big no-no for me. Like, I wore it yesterday, and I just looked up close in the mirror, and I was like, what? Like, it's just so crazy. The color is gorgeous. I think I'm just selling myself a dream by telling myself that I'm going to use this to spot conceal because I really know that I'm not because I typically forget to do that. But I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this. It's a super expensive product that works for so many, but it just didn't work for me. Next up, let's talk about some highlighters that disappointed me. First up is MAC Cream Color Base in Shell. Don't know what I was doing when I bought this, but I just bought it randomly and I don't like this. So you use this underneath your powder highlighter on its own if you're into that. This has like a greasy texture or a greasy look, but it's hard to blend, like it's dry. And I just, I never use this. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm probably gonna back to MAC this because it just gets no love for me. It's sticky. It's just really gross to me, so no. Next up is another highlight that this kind of hurts for me to talk about this because I love the brand, but this is the Tarte Amazonian Clay Highlighter in Exposed. So when I first got this, I actually used this in a video and I was like, oh, it's nice. But now every time I use it, I just feel like it looks so dry on my skin. And the color is gorgeous. I just think it's just a little too thick. Like, I'm building it up here. So you guys can see it. This is so pretty. But you have to be super duper hydrated to get away with this one. And for it to look nice. The color is gorgeous. I still love this like in the inner corners, on the brow bone. But on my face, since I do have dry skin, it just emphasizes that. So for that, I'm sorry, but... I don't love this. I like it, but I'm just not obsessed with it. Next up are two highlights that are super duper hyped up on Instagram, on YouTube, everywhere, but I don't know what I was doing. So I bought both of these. These are the Dior Nude Air Glowing Gardens powders in 001 Glowing Pink and 002 Glowing Nude. This is what I have on right now. So packaging, gorgeous. Product inside, gorgeous. Like, it looks so pretty. Color, gorgeous. But the fact that it emphasizes my dryness and my texture so much in person, like up close, I just, I can't. From far, it looks gorgeous. Like on camera, you're like, oh, it looks so pretty. So do you guys see all that texture? It might just be me going crazy, but I just, I'm not feeling that texture. Like the color when you move is so pretty and reflective, but yeah, no. For the price and the fact that I got both of them, it's just insane. Like, I don't reach for this, and for that, it's very disappointing, and I regret buying them. They're pretty. They were limited edition, so that's why I bought them, but honestly, there are so many other great highlighters out there that are way cheaper than this. I pretty much got this because they were so hyped up. The packaging was so pretty, but up close, they're just a big no-no. Next up is Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Blushed Copper. So this was limited edition, I believe, or they brought it back. I'm not sure, but I got this when it was like, oh my god, Blushed Copper. The packaging is so pretty. I mean, it's like the traditional Becca, but like a rose gold outside packaging. So when I first got this, I would use this as blush. 
So fast forward till now, I just don't know what I was thinking using this as blush. Come on. That's like super duper chrome copper. This just looks ridiculous on me. I don't know, it's just too clownish on me. And I think on someone with deeper, darker skin, this would look so pretty as a blush. But it's not a highlight on me and it's not a blush on me. So for that, it makes it very disappointing and a product that I regret buying. This is the Buxom Bronzer in Tahiti. Ooh. This one just looks so muddy on my skin now. When I first got it, I liked it because I was like, ooh, it's so like bronzy and it makes me look like I just came from vacation. This is almost like the butter bronzer from Physicians Formula. It's very similar, like the coconut scent, it has like a sheen to it, but I very much prefer the Physicians Formula because at least that one is forgiving. This one has so much sheen and it's just so chunky that I'm just not feeling this. I honestly regret buying this. It was nice at first, like the first time that I used it, I was like, ooh, pretty, but then after that, I'm like, why the hell did I get this? No bueno. No bueno. The next product is so gorgeous. I've used it in a tutorial. It's so pretty, but it's disappointing and I'll tell you why. This is the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill number five. Now this color is beautiful. This is such a gorgeous eyeshadow. It's a cream shadow, it's very bronzy. The color is nice, but even when you're just like dipping in, cause I like to use my finger with these kinds of products, there's so much crumbling happening in the package that it gets very, very messy. Like if a crumble falls on your leg or on your shirt, it's gone because this stuff is really really pigmented so it is a little bit messy but I feel like ColourPop and the Maybelline color tattoos or like the L'Oreal pressed pigments like there's so many other types of pigments or even just eyeshadows that can be built up to an intensity it's so difficult to put on wing liner with cream products I get it but with this one it was just super duper hard to put it on it made my brush super stiff so I guess I just prefer shadows because then you could still do your wing liner but this was just so expensive and realistically how many times am I gonna do this on the lid maybe once in a blue but not every day because I don't like to use the same products every day because I don't want to look the same every day if you don't do YouTube videos and you just want to have a quick on-the-go look then these are great there are some Makeup Forever eyeshadows that have this kind of pigment and they're not gonna dry out. Cream products eventually will dry out. I'd rather have an eyeshadow in a palette. So I don't know, I'm on the fence with this one. Like I love the color, but if I wasn't doing YouTube videos, I feel like I would get more use out of this because I just don't wanna use this. It's one product that costs so much and I'm always gonna have that same lid color and that can get boring. So I'm sorry, Giorgio Armani. It's just not worth the money. And last but not least, I want to talk about some eyeshadows. So the first one, again, this hurts because I love the brand so much. This Too Faced Love Palette. Honestly, I just don't go for this one because of the packaging and the format of the eyeshadows. Some of the shadows in here are so pretty. They're like light washes of glitter, pretty fairy colors. The palette itself is really thick and just the packaging, I don't know, I just don't go for this one. I just wish they were traditional like circles or squares and just not in this little format. I don't know, ooh. One of the eyeshadows almost fell out. But the eyeliner pencil that comes in here, which is the black waterproof eyeliner, love it. I use that baby up. Like whenever I talk about the Too Faced eyeliner, you guys are like, where the hell did you get that one? It was from this palette and I love it. Like it's so black, it's so creamy, it doesn't smudge. Like it's awesome. So I'm so grateful to have this palette because the eyeliner came with it. But I don't know, it's just something about this that I don't... I don't love. I love my Too Faced chocolate bar palettes. I love Too Faced palettes in general. Just this one, I was like, where are you guys going with that? You know? So yeah. Hurts to say, but not feeling this one. So this next product is probably my most expensive product that's in my collection, period. So this is the Natasha Denona 28 Green Brown Palette. This retails for $240. Insane, right? You do get lots of shadows, so I was justifying it. I was like, 28 shadows, if they're that good, it's gonna be worth it. So when you open this up, you get this really annoying sheet that you can cut off, but I don't want to cut this off because it does have the names of the eyeshadows, which I find really helpful. So I apologize for not cleaning my palette beforehand. This gets really dirty, I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. This has the most fallout ever. The main color that I abuse in this palette is that silver shade right there. That eyeshadow is 10M Aluminum, so you can get these shadows separately. I completely recommend this aluminum color. I also just like the frosty colors in here in general, like this bronzy shade and like some rose gold shades. The mattes in here, not so much. 
they just don't last on my eyes and for the price I'm like what the hell like this was so expensive why is it lasting I'm like oh maybe it's my eyes maybe it's the primer I'm like I'm trying to blame everything but it's just this like I'm just so mad at this palette because one there's fallout so in order for me to use these shimmery shades which are gorgeous I have to use a glitter glue which for normal eyeshadows I feel like shouldn't be a thing they should just be able to stick on the eye with a regular primer so what I do is I use a primer I do the mattes and then I do a glitter primer and then I do this for that I would rather use a glitter a loose glitter at least that I can pat and it's not gonna move even with the glitter glue it still had fallout which drives me insane and these will crease on me so I don't know if it's just because I have hooded eyes but even this silver shade with a glitter glue like the Too Faced one or any glitter glue the glitter in the shadow will just transfer it creases it looks like a sweaty hot mess after a couple of hours don't get me wrong I still use this because I have to or else I'm utterly insane because I mean it was $250 for Pete's sake so I do use it but I just I'm not a hundred percent satisfied with it and that makes me very upset and very sad because that's a lot of money a lot of money and you can easily just customize your own palette and I'm so insane I actually had the quads like Natasha Denona sells the quads of the shadows but I was like ooh all these colors all together when I could have just made my own quad with like my must have kind of colors like this silver is awesome because it's so so silver and so pigmented it's the first silver eyeshadow that I like which says a lot but I just wish it wore nicely I wish the mattes in here were pretty the colors are so pretty the mattes are gorgeous like there's this reddish brown but I find that in two hours it starts disappearing like yesterday I was wearing this palette and I feel like after I filmed that video the matte colors in my eyes were just gone like go back to that video and look at my crease look at the eyeshadow I actually filmed a tutorial on that look and a lot of you guys were requesting it and I think it's because you really just like that silver shade maybe the silver contrasted with dark hair like it looks so cool so I will upload the tutorial just so you guys can see what I'm talking about but if I don't use a glitter glue fallout everywhere which okay no big deal but then the mattes don't perform well <sighs> I don't know I'm just I'm so torn about this because I really wanted to be obsessed with it. I feel like when they're produced for the palette, the quality changes. I know that sounds weird, but my quads are so pretty. And then when I use this, I'm just like, really, Natasha Denona? Really? I justified this because I do freelance and I was like, oh, perfect palette to bring with me. But then even like all of these green shades... It's like, how many greens do you really need? And then the other one has a bunch of purple. It's like, why couldn't we get one palette with all neutrals? Like this size, like a 28. I guess you can customize one, but like, why doesn't she sell just something like this with all neutrals or warms and cools, like colors like that, or an all matte one or an all shimmer one? If they sold an all shimmer 28 palette, I think it would be a lot better than these matte colors in here. Because honestly, there's like this pinky shade in here. Like, I'm never going to use that. It sucks because it was so expensive, but I just wanted to let you guys know my thoughts on this I still use it I'm still gonna use it but it was disappointing just want to put that out there another disappointing palette which I actually have on my eyes today so just because they're disappointing doesn't mean I'm not gonna use them because I'm just not the type of person that's gonna waste my money and just let it sit there like I'm gonna try to make it work some way somehow so this is the Mel Cosmetics rust stack the problem with this the colors are phenomenal colors right on my alley I was like what there's a shade that looks like uninterrupted in there and a peachy shade and a white shade and woo like I thought this was gonna be a win baby like the colors in here are winners but the formula on this is just not like the dark matter stack the dark matter stack is awesome it blends beautifully like that unseen color the red color all the colors the black they perform so well they're buttery these are really chalky so they're swatching really nicely on my hand the fact that I have to use so many different brushes to try to make this work makes it very disappointing and I know I'm not the only one because when I talked about this a lot of people were like oh my god I thought I just got a bad batch because it's so chalky I'm like no me too again I have this on my eyes and I like the colors like the color Colors are gorgeous they're rusty warm browns that I love but for the price they should just be buttery soft blendable but they're just not and again I made it work like I love how the eyeshadow looks when I'm like trying to blend for hours and like packing and using like seven different brushes but for the price I think that's very disappointing again I'm gonna make this work because it was a lot of money and I love the colors I just feel like the formula is so inconsistent because the other stacks are gorgeous and they blend so nicely but this one is just weird the dark matter stack as my baby I've purchased two of those love that but this is a little disappointing especially for the price 
And really quickly before I go, this product I recently purchased, this is the Anna Sui Lip Balm. I got this on Beautylish and it was pricey for a lip balm. Everybody was raving about it, left and right. Everybody's like, oh my god, best lip balm ever. And then I put it on, I'm like, really? This doesn't really offer much hydration to me. I don't know, maybe it's because I just started using it. Maybe it'll have like long-term effects, but it's not that like super hydrating feel on the lips. And I like that, especially because I have dry lips. I want something that feels like it's working. Perhaps it does work, so I'm not going to say it's a complete disappointment because it's fairly new. The packaging is super cute, and I'll see if it works better over time, but so far, I'm just like... I bought a really expensive lip balm and I don't know why. So that concludes my products that I regret buying or that were disappointing to me. Let me know what products were disappointing to you. High-end products, products that were super hyped up on YouTube. Let me know what didn't work for you so I can avoid those. I feel like I was so compelled to let you guys know about these products that just didn't work out for me. Again, they might work out for you. It just didn't work out for me. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.